Uh, if, if you can explain to, to our audience who's more of a performance sailing on they know the race, they're familiar with it, yeah. a, a little bit about uh, this port selection process in, in this sort of complicated timeline and um, the intricacies of, of making the announcement. Um, why, why this one now, in terms of the rest of the race, having not sorted out yet? Uh, let's let me ask, answer your question quite pretty quick, quickly. Uh, the, the interesting thing is the selection process. We have opened the selection process in January last year, and 82 cities have shown interest to uh, to be part of the race. That's of course phenomenal. Uh, and of course, not all these uh, show of interest are really going to be uh, materializing. But uh, again, we had 82 cities that were interested to host the race, which is a great success for the Volvo Ocean Race, and, and a great appreciation. With those cities, and in the Northern America area, there were a couple of cities interested. We went down to a selection process, and it's not only about selecting the city, if it's good or bad, because we have come from very nice cities in the US on the West Coast, and we would love to go to San Fran. But it's making it our race extremely difficult to go from China to San Fran, and then around the Horn. That's impossible because of the weather pattern. So it's weather, it's logistics, it's cities, it's interest in the cities, it's, it's buy-in. So a lot of elements that play a role, and then also the commercial perspectives of our sponsors and our and our teams. And if you put that all in the equation, we had to do 10,000 race simulations. My 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 team in uh, in Alicante, the, the, the onshore navigator, made 10,000 analyses of a boat that doesn't exist yet. Nobody has seen it. Only exists on paper to sail it around the world in 10,000 instances and to see if a, a certain race was possible, yes or no. And when while he was done that, then the logistic guy came in. And he said, oh. But if you're sending from Newport to, to Europe, that's too quick. We cannot have our containers in time. So uh, figure it out. So then we have to make another change in the route, make the stopover longer or shorter, or, or potentially go even around the British Islands. All those kind of things have been put in the equation. And then at one stage, you get the overall uh, map. And you say, OK, this is a race that's good for the sailors. And this time round, you have, may have noticed the lag number uh, two from receiver goes into the Asian waters. It's a, it's a real Southern, uh, Southern, America, Southern, Southern Ocean lag, a real Southern Ocean lag that was missing mm. already a long time. So it's really going to be a great race. And going into Newport is going to be a dream for a lot of sailors. Yeah, we know it's a good sailor's town. Uh, can you talk about teams? Right now we, we've got the, the all-women's team out there playing, uh, testing, and some of the slow teams are going to be slow to develop. But um, how, do you, how do you create all this activity and keep attention when uh, the teams are sort of so far out? The, the good thing is, uh, compared to the last race, remember the Puma boat went into the water in May. So May 2014, that would be. So uh, teams are really six to eight months ahead of schedule this time compared to last time. Yeah. And the women's team is really very good prepared. So I would just say to, the, to all the male competitors, this is going to be serious what the Swedish uh, girls are doing. So uh, we should be, uh, yeah, we'll be preparing soon with the guys also. Um, it, it, in the history of this thing, a lot of the teams have been uh, associated with, with ports, and that, that gives a good hook. Uh, do you get a sense that ar around this route, how many of the stopovers do you feel confident that might have that hometown team? Uh, it is, of course, a, a great asset, like we had in Spain. Uh, for, uh, that's the reason why we have also our headquarters there. It's always magnificent seeing 800,000 people in the race village uh, at the start, always with one or two Spanish boats. We've got to have the same situation in Boston. That was the reason for going to Boston, of course, uh, uh, when Puma entered the race. Big success also. Uh, and, and we have seen now also that in Receiver in, uh, in Brazil, they announced a, a great team. It's going to be a performance team from Brazil and a stopover. So those cities have so it's got the same uh, concept. Abu Dhabi last race around, also the same impact. So we, we hope for many cities to follow that example. Um, in terms of the, the stopover lengths, you had mentioned that uh, the complication of uh, moving logistically, uh, do you see this Newport stopover as um, kind of a quicker one like you had Lorient last time as well? Yeah, exactly, I like Lorient. That's a, that's a good comparison. It will definitely include two full weekends uh, and it will be a full week. But it's not going to be a three, a three week stopover. We, we do that in Brazil after the Southern Ocean Lag, do full maintenance, and normally we should be all right here. Okay, so you uh, left turn out of Newport, and then um, where would you ideally go? Uh, to Europe. <laughs> there you go. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we just want to uh, bring, uh, we got a stopover announcement here for uh, Newport and Rhode Island, uh, but maybe you could bring us up to speed on the boats, which are in uh, different pieces in different parts of uh, Europe. Yep. Uh, maybe give us a boat update and uh, where you stand on that. Yep. Uh, well, on the boat side, we, uh, we are just now starting the construction of boat number two. 
And boat number one is the hull is finished, the deck's finished, uh, and the structure's finished, and it's now being brought to England from Switzerland, France, and Italy, where the three parts are built for assembly, and that's you know putting the whole boat together. And then we start immediately building boat number two in Italy first with the hull and then the deck. Uh, on the rig side, we are on mast number five already in New Zealand. Uh, so that's well progressed. Uh, and then there is about 80 suppliers who supply a different kit to these boats who are now delivering all the parts. But uh, it's a complex, probably the most complex one design project done in the history. Uh, and we have put very, very, very uh, challenging uh, tolerance levels uh, on what is one design that I think the world has never seen before in sailing. We're talking in a 65 foot boat of a tolerance of one millimeter, uh, pretty much across the whole boat. Uh, from where the toilet is positioned to uh, how long the television cable is from a camera to the recorder. Uh, and all of this has to be one design. Uh, and we really want to, um, to achieve something that's never been done before. So I'm very optimistic. It's, uh, it's a tough timeline. We're going to launch a boat every seven weeks. Uh, but we are on good track and we are on time from the original plan. So uh, I think we chose the right, uh, right yards and the right team to, to do it. So, um, but, but still a lot of work to do. In terms of the allocation of the boats, uh, with, with only a couple teams sort of percolating uh, out there, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what teams are, will come forward and uh, how the boat allocation will go from there? Yeah, well, at the moment we have three boats that are allocated already, uh, and, uh, and two of those teams are publicly announced, one, has, one is confidential. Uh, and it's the first come first serve uh, basis where we do this. So. Uh, if a team wants a boat, they come to us and, and we ask who they are and they have to prove that they're a real team, they have to prove that they're going to enter the race and then they put a deposit on the, on the boat and then they start paying the boat when they, they start, we start building their actual boat. Uh, and one of the big reasons for us to go to One Design was the fact that we realized in a very difficult economy like we're living now, uh, it takes longer for the teams to get funded. Uh, they need more time to do that. And, and the only way we can give teams more time is to make sure the boats are built. <laughs> Because uh, traditionally in these races, as you have the same in America's Cup, uh, you run out of time. Uh, that's what happens. I mean, we, we see all these teams that were entered for the Cup. We see all the teams we have had in the past. They get to a certain period where you have to start designing or building a boat and you're out of the game. Uh, and now, essentially, uh, even next spring, in, in one year from now, you'll be fine because the boats are built. <laughs> in terms of the uh, sponsor front, what, what is the, the sentiment that you're getting back from the teams uh, in their hunts? Oh. Quite positive. I mean, we, we did expect um, a massive uh, challenge in Europe in particular because the European uh, market, is particularly Spain, France and, and, uh, and that region is, is very, very difficult now. Uh, but we still have, we still today quite confident about, you know, having a Spanish team in the next race. It looks very strong and positive. Uh, we still see challenges in France. We see that, you know, the fact that we have a Brazilian team announced now is, is a sign of what is really a strength of the Volvo Ocean Race is that we can go to the whole world. So when, when Europe uh, is struggling, then we can have Brazil and, and Middle East and China in better positions. Uh, but the, the general the feedback we have is uh, very positive on the boat concept we have from the sponsors because they feel it's less risk for them, uh, it's less cash flow, uh, and they don't risk having a slow boat. <laughs> they don't, and we have obviously increased the safety margins on this new boat quite significantly. And although uh, braking equipment can always happen in fast sailing boats, and it will probably happen in the new boats as well, because they're going to be stronger, but then the sailors will push them harder. <laughs> uh, but, but still, for the sponsors, it's important that you don't have a fatal uh, problem, uh, that you can always recover and come back in the race, and, and that's what we're working on. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, thank and uh, we look forward to seeing and you in a couple of years. Have, we hope to have an American team. I'd like to say that. Uh, we do as well. It's, yeah. it's still, a, still a long road to go, but I, I think that uh, it's time now for a new generation of American sailors to come into the race. And, and uh, we are supporting a few uh, that are working on that, and we are hoping to see some results of that. Excellent. Thank you very much.